Now, there's nothing new about bullying, but it has become harder for victims to escape from the taunts, with mobile phones and networking sites playing an increasingly large role in teenagers' social lives. The insults don't stop at the end of the school day. A new research from the charity Beat Bullying showed that almost half of all child suicides in the UK are down to bullying. Figures show that 176 children between the ages of 10 and 14 committed suicide from 2000 to 2008. Based on cases reported in the media, 44% of those deaths were due to bullying. In the same period, there were 10 times as many suicides in the next age group up, that's 15 to 19-year-olds, suggesting that hundreds of teenagers could be killing themselves because of bullying. Well, Nicola Peckett is a spokeswoman for the Samaritans. She says more needs to be done to make children aware there are other ways of dealing with their problems. It is very important to make sure that um, we, we find a way to reach these young people at this vulnerable age because they haven't got full decision-making abilities yet, all of them. I mean, you know that a 10-year-old can almost still be a child as some four, so other 10, 11-year-olds seem quite mature already. Um, and there's all that emotional turmoil going in, and that is a vulnerable stage, I would say. Very important, therefore, that young people know that they should speak to somebody if they're having all of these feelings. Well, I'm joined in the studio now by Richard Piggin from the charity that produced that research, Beat Bullying, and also Georgia Wood, who was a victim of bullying herself. Very good afternoon to both of you. Georgia, if you could just start with telling us exactly what happened to you, how you were bullied. I moved from primary to secondary school, and I made a new group of friends, but also with some other girls. And I'm a, like a big dancer, so I used to dance on most lunch times, and they thought that I was ditching them and hanging around with other girls, and they didn't like that. So we got into an argument and I thought that it was going to be like normal argument, blow over the next day, just like normal girl stuff. But it wasn't and then I realised that more and more people were getting involved and boys were getting involved, siblings were getting involved and then they started saying stuff, texting me, emailing me and ringing me at home so I didn't feel safe anywhere. What kind of things were they saying to you? Uh, they were saying, call me fat and ugly because they knew it would affect me because I'm... It affects me when people say my appearance. They were starting rumours, they were making up hate mail sites, uh, devoting their whole um, social networking sites to me and how much they dislike me as a person and I wouldn't be able to turn a corner without being called something. It's been horrific and you were driven unfortunately to the point where you did consider taking your own life. Yeah. That was a hard time for me. Yeah. It must have been awful and your mum found out. Tell us how your mum found out. I wrote it down in a, diary, in a diary and then I ripped the pages out and hid them underneath my bed because I thought no one would find them. But I didn't know that they were going to redo my room for me when I got back. So when they ripped the sheets back, they obviously found the three pieces of paper, a poem written in bright red on the back of that, um, a letter and a wilted flower that I drew and that my mum had an urge to read them and that's when they found out what, that I tried to kill myself. And obviously they were horrified and I imagine immediately got help for you. I couldn't do it immediately because I was away with the school but the next day when I got home they went and told the school what happened. The school were very supportive but I wouldn't be sitting here now with you if it wasn't for beat bullying because they literally saved my life. Okay, well, let's talk to Rich now from Beat Bullying. This is an awful story, but unfortunately, all too common, and girls in particular are targeted far more than boys, aren't they? It is a really distressing subject, but one that we feel we need to address urgently, and our research can really just be the start of it. There is a worrying lack of inve investigation, lack of information around child suicide, and we as a society need to understand more about some of the factors and some of the reasons why young people are taking their own lives. It's only then that government, charities, families, communities can really then put in place the preventative measures to stop young people in the future from taking such drastic action. And as we were hearing there from Georgia, she was targeted by a text online, uh, and this is becoming all the more prevalent now. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, obviously these things weren't around, but, you know, we had, you know, there was lots of teasing at school. How do you differentiate between kind of innocent teasing and something that is more serious and more will affect a child more, uh, such, such as the insistent bullying that Georgia suffered? What we're talking about here is, is persistent bullying. Um, so we're talking about young people who are perhaps don't want to go to school in the morning, they don't, want to, they don't want to get up and then as soon as they leave the house they can be targeted perhaps on the way to school, on school transport, then they can be targeted at school being bullied in the, in the classroom or in the corridors, in the playground, then they leave school and they can still be targeted by the bullies via social networking sites, by their phones, uh, via email, via MSN, 
And so for some young people, it feels like there's no escape. It's 24-7. And the impact on this, you know, can't really be underestimated. No, there are, there are um, training courses at schools, aren't there, George? We can have a look at some of those pictures now uh, of the help that schools receive and training courses that children can undergo. But what help could you have, ha have got, do you think, from your school, uh, from other people, perhaps, like Beat Bullying, if you'd have known about it? I did actually get counselling. But if I'd have been fully aware of big bullying, I would have probably been straight onto them. I would have told them everything, and I'm sure they would have helped me as much as they could. I just didn't find them at the right time. What's your advice then to other kids going through what you went through? I say this to everybody: you have to tell somebody because I went through it alone, and that nearly cost me my life. So you have to tell a, a parent, a grown-up, a teacher at school, or just like a close friend that maybe you've got because you can't go through it alone then you feel like you have nobody and it's horrible. Okay, Richard, just lastly to you, because you're obviously calling on the government to invest far more in this. What more can, should schools be doing, given the support? We welcome the government's commitment to tackle bullying school, but with the link between suicide and bullying, it's all the more pertinent now. And really, we need measures in place to tackle bullying, and what that means is the implementation of, of bullying prevention work in every school in the country.